three, two, one, and we're back. Okay, so in this SBH podcast, we're going to be going over how to fish at night. And it's one of the, probably one of the biggest shifts in my fishing that I did in the past year that went from catching not a lot of really big fish to catching a lot of really, really big fish very consistently. Now, when and it's something a question that I get so often, and I guess it's it's kind of the most important one. People always ask me, how can I catch bigger fish? And one of the first things that I'll ask them is, when are you fishing? And 99.99% of the time, they say that they're fishing during the day. Generally, they'll say, oh, I try to fish in the morning or in the evening, which is smart, and that's what you should be doing. If you're going to be fishing during the day, I highly, highly suggest fishing either in the evening or in the morning because that's when the bass it triggers a bite any yeah any change really triggers a bite i mean i'm talking about weather change wind change um it can either shut off a bite or it can hit up and it can make a bite pick up i mean all of those things factor into many many different reasons why there are big fish in an area so um or big fish feeding in an area so I, I wanted to dive into it because um, I, I get so many questions about how do you fish at night and is it important to fish at night because there's more big fish and whatever, which is completely true. I mean, when I'm fishing at night, and there, I, hate, I mean, I personally hate fishing at night. I hate, hate every second of it. I mean, it's pretty badass to be fishing at night, but like at the same time, uh, when, when you're fishing and it's and you're up until you fish all night you've been fishing all night it's like you started at like 12 and it's like two in the morning right it's not very long 12 and it's like four in the morning and you're tired and you've wasted an evening which i've done multiple times uh <clears throat> catching absolutely nothing so it's like it's very hard to stay um like to stay motivated to fish at night because i feel like a lot of people get get like kind of like discouraged or like kicked off of it because they're they're like they they get discouraged because the it's so difficult to fish at night when you've never fished at night before as well as if you're not super confident fishing in general i wouldn't say hop right into fishing at night if you're fit and especially like it's super dangerous to fish at night so if you're not super super competent fishing wise, and the fishing part of it needs to be second nature, you don't you shouldn't be, you should know you can. And I guess the biggest test for this is you should close your eyes when you're fishing during the day when you first start doing this, and you should cast and retrieve a few times with your eyes closed, and you should feel when the plug hits the water. You should feel when the plug is working correctly. You should feel when the plug comes out of the water, and you should know when the plug is getting close to you. Um, and so, and that goes without saying as far as like plugs and eels and whatever that I'm throwing at that time. Cause I throw, I throw eels, I throw, you know, I throw live and rigged eels all the time. I mainly throw plugs at night. Um, I have a few plugs on, on my, uh, what is going on right now? What the hell is happening? Okay. I, I just have some weird stuff going on on my computer. Okay. Anyway, we're good. Um, it was like PowerPoint was doing something weird. Um, so anyway, um, I try to fish at night because it holds the bigger bass. Now I have plugs on my table that I fish a lot at night. This is actually from a podcast that I did and will probably come out before this one. Um, but, uh, in this podcast, I kind of want to go over, you know, why, why fishing at night is so beneficial um, how to make it less daunting and less scary and because in my I get so paranoid and freaked out fishing at night and I know a lot of people do I mean if you're one of those people that can go out there and fish at night and not be freaked out and paranoid all the power to you but I'm always out there and I'm, I hear things and I mean it's kind of crazy when you're out there you're walking through the water and you see like you're seeing the eyes of the shrimp and lobsters and stuff under the water it's so freaky but it's also so much fun i mean it's it as i said it's it's like especially when it's like wavy or if you're swimming out at night it's so it's so like like fun. it's so much fun i mean it it's fun because it's scary and that's why it's so much fun because it adds that extra 
uh, little, like, the extra little uh, thrill to it. Oh my gosh, PowerPoint is opening up on my computer for no reason. I'm going to quit a PowerPoint. I apologize. <laughs> the struggles. Okay, so um, when I'm... When I fish at night, I, I try to, well, I guess we should get, you know what, why don't we get into my topics, because I feel like I'm, I'm just going to ramble on if I don't get into some topics here. Um, okay, so, number the, like, number one, like, most important thing to, you know, keep in mind while fishing is uh, using, what lights are you going to be using at night? Um, <clears throat> I at least have two lights on me at all times. Sometimes I'll even have three and most of the time I'll have three. I mean, I'll have a, like, and I count my phone as a light. Like if everything else is dying, I do have my phone, which can, I can use as a light. <clears throat> but I can also, I've, I fished so much at night um, and I generally don't fish places at night that I haven't fished during the day, at least a handful of times. Uh, to the point that I feel like I can walk that area like confidently with my eyes closed and be able to get back. Um, so what, and like when you do it enough at night, if there's any sort of moon out, even if there's no moon out, you should be able to not have your lights on and be able to walk across rocks and stuff. Now I'd only do that if you're number one in a very private area. Uh, number two, there's a lot of other fishermen around and they're like trying to either see where you're fishing or um, I don't know, like you don't want to disturb them or no, tell them that you're there. Uh, otherwise, I would turn my light on as I'm walking across the rocks because it's just dangerous to not have your light on. Now, I do I have my light on when I'm walking? Most of the time I don't, um, unless I feel pretty confident that like, number one, I'm like, it's so dark out that I can't function. And if there's like nobody around, then I'll turn my light on. Um, and you get used to it, but I guess for the lights that I use, I have them, I've talked about the lights that I use. Um, I use the Pelican 5010 light. Uh, this is a great light because um, it's waterproof. Um, and I wear, I have a little uh, surgical tubing and I just put it around my neck. Um, and this just is under my fishing uh, jacket at night and uh, I can swim with this and this is will stay dark. It's also incredibly, incredibly bright. It's a super, super bright light. Um, and uh, it, it just is fantastic when you're like trying to weigh a bass or you're trying to grab a really big fish and or like something you're needing to change plugs. You can quickly pull it out and look into your bag as you're changing plugs. Um, that's really important. And then I also use a uh, UK headlamp. Um, this is a waterproof headlamp. It's pretty simple uh, because really it has two modes. It's on, it's off, and that's it. Um, it has a little red screen that you can shift over the light if I can do this correctly. Yeah, you can shift a little red screen over the light so you make the, red, the light red, but um, it just... It's super simple, it's waterproof, again, uh, because I've killed so many headlamps and so many lights when they're not waterproof, it's just not worth not having waterproof lights. Uh, this is a pretty cheap one, this is a little bit more expensive, um, and I at least have both of these on me at all times, uh, because having light on you is super, super important for your safety, um, whether you're, you know, whatever you're doing, I mean, it's just super important because you never know when you're, like, scaling rocks and stuff you need to be able to see where you're going and uh yeah it's super important to have lights uh so you know where you are and um especially it helps you when you're trying to get back if you've never really fished the place i've only i this year i fished one spot for the first time at night um but at night by i went out there in the evening and i fished it at night and it came back uh, I was like at sunset, so I could. I went out there without any light, and I came back with my lights on, and I did pretty well. I got a few bass that were like 35 inches, and this is a spot that I never fished before. I had like three that were 35s, um, so that was a eye-opening experience for that location. But also, it was like I didn't fully know where I was going, 
when I, cause I kind of was super excited to get this spot cause I saw uh, a lot of current pushing by this corner and it was like way, way far away. And like I knew it was going to be good. It was an outgoing tide and I was kind of in a, in a little cut. It was, it was perfect. I knew there was going to be some bass there and sure enough, there was a handful of thirties there. So that was awesome. But again, those fish I caught all after 12 o'clock at night. Um, I had a bunch of schoolies beforehand, but all as soon as it like got super, super dark out, like fully the sunset, that's when the bite picked up. So I'm going to get into like fishing a spot that is going to, is going to, how, like, what do you do when you're fishing a spot for the first time um, at night? I mean, I always talk about, I have to talk about scouting. I, if I'm fishing a new location and I know I'm going to want to fish at night because it's looking good on Google Earth or whatever. I always go there and especially this is what the winter is for, you know, you can go there if it's not like you're crazily climbing or wading through water when it's like 20 degrees out. But, um, I always scout almost all of my areas before, um, well, before it gets, uh, before the fish are in, but, um, I go, I scout the area. I look for current. I look for, you know, waves, structure. Um, I'll even sometimes bring a rod with like a bucktail tied on so I can cast out there and let it drop down into the structure so I can feel the rocks and stuff. And if it's looking really, really good, then I, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to fish this at night. I count my footsteps from different landmarks that are there so if there's like a big boulder before i have to turn swim out or if there's like a boulder before i turn left or i know so i kind of have a gauge of how far away things are going to be in my head um when i'm fishing at night especially if i'm don't have my lights on i need to be able to walk to a spot and know okay it's 150 steps this way to that boulder and the bass are gonna and then if i wait out another six feet there's gonna be a drop off or a rip that I know that if I cast in there it's going to be pushing in this direction because of the tide and whatever so when I'm fishing at night I want to make sure that <clears throat> the uh the wind and the again same you want to have the best conditions so you want the wind to be right you want the tide to be right and then I guess you have the moon phase which is super super important um when I fish in general, I've gone over the moon phase multiple, multiple times during the podcast, but I'll go over it again. I'm talking full moons are really good. I love full moons, but new moons are even better in my personal opinion. I think that the bass are just more aggressive and there's more of them feeding. Uh, but any around any moon phase is going to really um, heighten the, like, the bite. And if you can get the correct wind matched with the moon phase... Um, I mean, you can really do some crazy stuff as far as size goes for fish. And the reason I'm not talking about tide as much, because I think unless it's a super, like, unless it's really current-based fish, like if the fish are really based on the current pushing in certain directions, then um, I, I don't have any problem going there and fishing from slack, low tide, all the way through high tide, and, like, feeling confident of catching fish or fishing either side of any tide in a spot. If I have good wind and I have a new moon or a full moon, I'm going to be like, I'm super ready and I know I'm going to catch a big fish. And uh, that's when I do all my scouting. I'm doing all my scouting within the days around the moon, especially if the wind is not in my, like, I have like, a, I have like three spots that I like really, really like. And I, I mean, they, I, they cover all the, the wind and that's, and people are going to be like, why do they cover all the wind? Because I think, and this is pretty controversial as far as like, I guess, where you fish, but for the rocks and the fit, as far as the rocks go, I think the wind is almost the most important key. And I've talked about the keys to getting more big fish and uh, fishing up a level podcast. But I think if you can get the right wind, it's going to really, really help you catch some monster, monster bass. So, um... So yes, we went over scouting a little bit and now we've gone over, you know, some, we went over lights. I'm going to go over like color of plugs are, it's very interesting. People's views of like what's going to work at night. Um, and a lot of people say, okay, when it's, when it's a new moon out, you want to throw dark plugs. So this is a black and purple plug that I'm holding right now. Um, and black and purple is my go-to new moon color. Um, I either fish black and purple or I fish like 
like a bait matching color like I fish a bunker colored plug or I'll fish a mackerel colored plug but um, that this is the one exception like um, realistic looking plugs you can fish during any when it's like a full moon or a new moon they work equally as well um, but as far as like if I'm going for colors I tend this is what I tend to do I tend to fish like darker colors when it's a new moon and lighter colors when it's a full moon. Um, and I tend to do better that in like fishing that way. Uh, this is also very like loosely based because I've fished full moons with black and purple and done equally as well as I've fished white in a, during a new moon and I caught fish. And I think it's a big profile thing, but um, again, I've also fished white colored plugs during a new moon and not gotten a touch after throwing a realistic colored like bunker colored plug of the same exact plug i literally switched and this is all about this is what fishing to me is all about it's all about experimenting with colors and with sizes of plugs when i'm fishing if i'm on a good bite i'll fish like i'll catch like two or three fish with one plug and i'll switch it up even if i'm catching bass every cast i'm still going to switch it up because if i can switch it up and that tells me something either it's worse or better then i know that it's going to be that like it's it's like then i know it's like better or worse i guess so if i'm fishing a scenario where i'm catching a lot of fish on a realistic colored plug like that i did that night i got out there that night it was a full moon it was right after a hurricane so the waves were enormous um i was scared to go where i was i was standing like way back as these huge waves were you know 25 foot high waves would crash and roll maybe eight to ten feet of white water across this boulder field before then as it was just dropping slowly 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 and then crashing into the rocks um and this is what i was fishing in and i was pulling bass up to 30 pounds out of this uh th this night it was insane um and I was throwing a bunkered colored plug and I was throwing it and I was getting, I was getting fish every cast. And the, the great part was this is a, um, the plug that I'm using that I was using that night was a Pumba um, shad stick and the Pumba shad stick dives down, like deep, was able to dive down under the, uh, under the, the water where the, uh, like under the like white water so it was diving down to the like water under the white water the not super turbulent water and it was bouncing off the rocks nicely and the bass were just hugging the bottom that night and i was just per i was just letting this thing swim down and hit the rock as i talked about when i was talking about um metal ups i talked about this in the in a podcast that is going to come out before this um and it was hugging the bass were hugging the bottom and they were huge and they were feeding very like this profile was the key i mean they're feeding on adult bunker it was like everything was perfect that night and i and it swam down and i was getting hit every cast on with the bunker color one switched up to the white so i'm pretty sure i said this was a full moon i'm pretty sure it was a full no it was a new moon my bad it was a new moon because this sorry it was a new moon because this was a white color plug and it was not working See, I, I don't fully remember what moon it was, but I do remember that I switched to this white and it was not working and I'm pretty sure it was because it was a new moon and it was too dark. So um, I threw this on, I threw this out there. It, the other thing that, could, and this is again, why I'm saying like, this is something that I've, I'm gonna tell a different story after this that completely debunks this theory, but I think I know why. So I cast this out, it was new moon. There was <clears throat> a lot of white water coming through um, this dives down after pulling probably six bass that were between 15 and 25 pounds um, on the bunker color one. I throw this out there, it dives down, and I'm getting no hits. I did five casts with this after having six consecutive fish on this one without a single hit. So I switched it up back to this just to make sure. First cast got a 25 pounder. Okay, so I know that it was that plug that was having the problem. Then I switched it up to the black and purple. Now, different color, but still same plug, dove down under the water. I, don't, I didn't catch anything the first cast, didn't catch anything the second cast, but the third cast, whack, got a big fish on it. And then I did two more casts after that, both getting hit by bass that were between 15 and 25 pounds. 
and that was on the black and purple. So why did the white not work that night? And it could have been, and this is my theory of why it didn't work, uh, because the it, there was a lot of white water, and this is a white plug, and the white water is really the foam, uh, is white from the water, I guess. And so I was that my thought was maybe that was the problem because it was uh, that was why it wasn't working. Now that was just a theory. Now that could be. You know, this like you can throw a bucktail in very turbulent water that's white, and the fish still find it and eat it. Um, but who knows? That was just my theory and whatever about how why the white plug wasn't working. Different night, it was calmer out. Uh, there's still waves, but it wasn't as much white water as it was as there was at that time. Same experiment, pretty much. Um, I was throwing the bunker. And I was catching a lot of big fish on the bunker. Again, that cookie cutter, like 35 to 40 inch bass on the uh, the bunker. And then I was throwing this out. I tied this on, I threw it out and first cast hooked up. Second cast hooked up again on all of those, the same fish. And I was just catching the same size bass on the, on the same plug, but just in a different color. Now I didn't end up switching to the black and purple just because I was doing so well on the white, I just didn't end up switching up. But that just kind of debunks the theory of it was a new moon, I was catching fish on a white plug. So really, as far as color goes, I don't really think that matters as much as profile and what the bass are feeding on. Now, I do want to talk about profile in general because um, I think it's a very interesting thing that people, a lot of people have different theories about fish during different moons being like, more finicky because they're scared of bigger eels or they're scared of yeah because I was I watched a I watched a seminar where this guy was talking about how he, he was throwing bigger eels during a new moon and the bass were not eating it and then he tied on a smaller eel and they're eating the smaller eels so um, I was kind of curious about like because in I mean my theory in my um my experience, I've been fish. I've been fishing the biggest eels I could find. I mean, I in uh, the eeling podcast, which I think I'm gonna have another eeling podcast where I add a little bit to that. But in the eeling podcast, I rigged a eel, um, and that eel was two pounds without being rigged, um, which is enormous. Like that's a heavy, heavy, like eel. That's it was like it was twenty. I think I believe it was twenty three or twenty four inches, and it was super super heavy now i threw that during a new i threw like a, a that same sized eel during a new moon this was when it was alive and i caught a 45 inch bass on it so i don't know whether that person that was fishing and saying that bigger profile things scare the fish away was true or not because i've very like multiple times I've thrown eels that are enormous and had the bass eat it during a new moon. Same thing with a full moon. I've thrown giant eels during a full moon and they've eaten it just the same. Although I do think that I catch more big fish during a new moon than I do a full moon. Now, um, I've thrown, I throw huge, like I have a plug right here um, that is like hooked up on my stuff here. Okay, I have a plug right here. This is just a, swimmer pumba like jointed swimmer and the which is big too i mean this with the uh bucktail on it is probably um probably close to 14 inches you know and uh actually i think it's a 15 inch plug yeah so it's like 15 inches um so um and i i mean i was fishing with joe one night it was a new moon and he threw this out there and he had Probably he had three bass that were over 25 pounds and he lost one that had to be close to high 30 pounds, not a 40 pound bass on this plug. Um, so that's the thing. It's like you're going to say that you people make these blanket statements about like this works and this doesn't work. Now, the bass, I don't think that I think I think that is very, very false. I think bass don't follow strict rules. I think that every rule for striped bass fishing can be broken. I mean, I've caught two of the, like I've caught a 50 pound bass and a few low 30 pound bass, the big, literally the biggest bass of my life um, at 12 o'clock and it was 95 degrees. It was clear out. 
There's like no humidity. It was like there's nothing to affect the fish being there, and yet there was a giant fish there. Um, and and so that's the thing you want to like. And then I've earlier in the spring, my brother caught up 43 this year, um, and it was again 12 o'clock, not a cloud in the sky, not a, it wasn't a low pressure or high pressure. I mean, it was I guess it was high pressure, but there wasn't like anything really going on that was affecting the bite in any way besides it just being a good wind and it wasn't even that windy even and uh, so um the bass were just there and they're crunching and we caught a giant fish so um every rule in fishing can be broken profiles can be broken as far as like when i'm saying i'm throwing a giant plug and i think this is good to catch a big fit you want in order to catch a big fish throw bigger plugs yes but also you can catch a giant fish on a tiny little plug uh, or a tiny little fly that you're fishing, you know, so it really all rules for bass can be broken. I, I think personally, and every year I, I, I think about like, okay, the, the wind in the moon and this is going to make this happen. That's just going to increase your odds. Can you catch a bass with bad wind and bad moon phase and everything? Yeah. I mean, the, it's much lower odds of the fish being there, but if you think about it, the bass are going to, they're, I mean, it's not unlikely that a fish that is 50 pounds can swim down a sandy beach where there's no structure uh, and there's no real bait. There's no current. There's nothing there for no reason for it to be there, but it could just be moving along. And if you're throwing a pencil in there, you could be lucky enough to hook it. So as far as like people saying that there's strict rules that follow, that follow like the bass, I mean, that's something that I just don't believe in because again... I feel like every rule for striped bass fishing can and will be broken uh, and already has most likely. So, um, I mean, everything that I'm saying is just going to help increase your odds of catching a bigger fish. Um, hopefully it does end up catching yourself. Hopefully you do take this to your home waters and end up using this, the techniques that I say, because I think that I a lot of the stuff that I'm saying is very... Uh, like you can apply it well to a lot of different scenarios, not just fishing off the rocks or fishing off a sandy beach. I mean, a lot of stuff you can apply to your area to hopefully increase your, you know, catching bigger fish. Um, so I just want to read one thing that I have right here. Um, and then I can tell you, um, yeah, so, um, kind of got into this a little bit earlier i just i have a few things written down um so as far as uh like when i first started fishing uh at night it was kind of it was kind of a a daunting task as i said um i i went it was funny because the first time i I did what i i did this year except i just did did it better this year and did it smarter this year. Um, I, I, the year before, um, I fished probably a handful of times at night and, uh, with no, very little to no success, um, until the very, very end of the season. Um, so I, I caught probably, I don't know, maybe a handful of schoolies on like an SP minnow at night. Um, af- but haven't fished multiple times and been freaked out multiple times just fishing at night. Now, I'm like, when I fish at night, I think the biggest thing is just to get out of your own head, you know, be more focused on the fishing than less on like you feeling like you're going to be like attacked by something because uh, that was my fear. It's like I'm walking through like an area and it's like, I don't like, I, and I just have to tell myself I'm the dominant creature in this area. I'm not going to be attacked, but you know, it's still kind of weird and you're like freaked out because you, you, you're so out of your element. It's just scary to be so f- out of your element, being out in the middle of the ocean, you know, on a rock with the wind and the waves. And, uh, it's pretty crazy and pretty freaky, but it, once you get used to it, it's truly like a magical experience to be out there and to feel like confident, and happy, being out there and just like, it's so fun to be out there when it's really crazy. Um, but when I first started, I hated it and I still don't really like it, but it has its pros and cons, I guess. But I, I would fish, you know, plugs and I wasn't getting a lot of luck on the plugs and I wasn't catching a lot of big fish. Although, uh, there was one night towards the end of my season where I, 
uh, was throwing pencils at a huge school of ass. I mean, I'm sure if you had a drone or if you could, I wish I had a drone to put up above that school of bass because they weren't blitzing on the surface, but it was one of those things that you cast out and you can't like, you can't not have 15 fish like attack your plug. Like it's like crazy tails and like the bass are leaping out of the water and it's like insane. I mean that it must've just been a massive school of fish. Now I had a super strike bullet needle fish um, that I had with me at that time. And um, I was fishing with little pencil poppers and I was catching a lot of bass and it just got too dark and the bass shut off, wouldn't hit the pencil. I'm like, darn it. Cause I was having such good luck during when there was so many, cause during the day and I was catching so many big fish. And so I switched up to the little bullet super strike uh, needlefish and I cast it out there and sure enough first cast I'm whacking I whack a fish and it's not there none of these bass were over 28 inches but I was catching I caught so many fish and this was right at the end of the fall they were migrating I caught a huge school of bass you know migrating by my area it was probably hundreds upon hundreds of fish there and they weren't giant um, but they're like 20 inches and it was I was catching so many of them and it was awesome so um, I I then took that little thing and I kept it in the back of my mind. I was like, wow, I had one of the best nights in my season number wise for fish. Um, and it was at night. And that seed was planted in my mind that the night fishing, I spent all season and I was getting nothing. But the fishing at night was really, really, really good. And that was the best bite I had was on all year. Um, and so I was like, okay, I need to pursue this more. And it was funny because I was sitting there over the winter. I was like, why did I have such a bad season? And then I thought to myself, I'm, I was being an idiot. I didn't look at moon phases, didn't look at tides, didn't look at wind. None of this well, I kept in my mind. I was like, okay, next season, I'm keeping a diligent fishing log, which I didn't really do. And I'm going to um, like focus much like like way, way more on like, you know, wind and moon phase and everything like that. And so that's what I did is I, I focused heavily on moon and wind phase and uh, moon, <laughs> moon phase and wind and um, current and everything like that. Uh, I wrote it down for the first probably three months of the season. Well, it's super, sorry, it's super windy out. If you're hearing my windows like crack under the pressure of the wind, it's like blowing 45 out right now. It's crazy. Anyway, but um, I, I was, I started catching giant fish with the exact same pattern and i to the point that i was like not putting down anything for the log after i caught like after i went to like six different spots applied the exact same techniques and caught handfuls of bass over 30 pounds in all these different areas and i was like okay so it's pretty much a plug and play type thing if you can get the correct the correct uh conditions and you can like and you have good structure and whatnot and you can put it into practice, you're going to be catching big fish. Now, I mean, I've been catching, I caught, I, I mean, I was going anywhere. I was catching big fish in this, it, with the same, you know, like wind, moon phase, tide, everything like that. And I've gone over how to increase your, your like f your ability to catch big fish. And a lot of people always ask, why can't I catch big fish? And it's probably because you're not thinking about moon phase, tide, wind, and everything like that. Cause in current, all of those things, structure, uh, I've talked about this multiple times, but it being dark out is super important because the bass, um, the bass are feel more comfortable coming in close to the rocks and feeding at night. Um, and that gets me into my other, you know, my other topic for this is why, why are there more bass easily accessible by fishermen at night? And so, um, and that is because during the day, a lot of the times during the day, the bass are out deep chasing around schools of bait. Um, and so what happens is those fish at night will actually push bait or they will follow bait in closer to shore and they'll be feeding up and around the rocks and in the structure where they can ambush their prey easily. And um, they wait for little current breaks and they, you know, they do all sorts of stuff like that, trying to find those, the, those fish that are, you know, hiding and whatever around the boulders and stuff. 
So, and I've gone over that a lot, but like, so what the bass try to do is they try to make it, if you think about it, <laughs> um, the, the really, a really big fish has a hard time sneaking up on a smaller fish. Uh, it's fast and it's powerful and it can use it, use its ability to be in crazy conditions under either extreme pressure of wa water pressure, current, wind, whatever. Um, it could use, it's so powerful and so strong and so built to be in the worst water conditions possible that it can almost outdo any fish that is like gonna try to escape from it. It can almost outpower any bass or any bass, any um, bait fish. So what the bass do is they, they set themselves during the day, they slowly move around and rips and stuff looking for bait, but they're not doing super well. And the bigger they get, the lazier they are and they only expend uh, the correct amount of energy for uh, like just for like that one big meal. Uh, that's why I like throwing bigger plugs because I tend to catch bigger fish on bigger plugs because it weeds out the smaller ones, but it also gives that big fish the like it gives that big fish the knowledge of like if I can catch this bait, then I'm gonna not have to eat for a while. Like I'm gonna be good for a good amount of time if I can eat this 12 inch bunker or this 15 inch bunker. Um, and so what it, so what happens is the, the bass are, are coming in close at night because they don't have to chase and sneak up on the fish because it, cause they can kind of hide in the rocks and stuff. This is why they are in the rocks. And they can also sneak up closer to the bait because if you think about it, at night, a lot of those fish, they can't see 100 yards away. They can't see 20 yards away. They can't see... 20 feet away and they sh sometimes can't even see five feet away from them at night. So what happens is the bass is able to use its highly adapted lateral lines and sense of smell and uh, you know everything like that to be able to sneak up as close as it can to these fish before it like pounces by just striking, by speeding up really quick, grabbing it, sucking in a lot of water. I mean, it, it, they when a big bass chases a bait i mean you see it when it go after when they go after like a pencil popper it's insane how much like water they can move when they need to uh, and they can go airborne too i've seen it multiple times i've seen bass over 40 pounds leap out of the water no problem so they when they are keyed in on a bait they will go after it like you wouldn't believe um so uh what i i focus on is trying to trying to make it or what I guess the bass focus on is trying to make it as easy as possible for them to get as much energy as possible. So that's what you have to focus on. How can I make it as easy as possible for this bass to eat my plug? Now, uh, cause that's what they're doing is with the, the bait fish. Um, and my camera is like falling off right now. So I'm going to just move that quickly. I, I apologize. Um, it's just like not being level for some reason. Um, sorry for this shaky camera um so uh the the bass are up close in the rocks trying to make it as easy as possible to sneak up on a bait and that's why they're in the rocks because it's easier for them to sneak up on the bait when it's dark out that's why they're in close that's why they push the bait in close that's why they're in the rocks looking for the bait i just was going over it again okay so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to throw a large profile at that fish and um, the reason why I'm doing that is because I know that that bass is looking for one big meal. Um, and that's why I'm talking about when I fish at night, I don't throw anything that small because I think that the bass are wanting the bigger bait. They want the giant menhaden. They want the big bunker. They want to get it in up close to the, to the surface. They want to push it up close to the bank. Um, so that's why they're in close. That's why it makes it so much easier for us shore anglers to catch big fish. And that's why I think in certain scenarios, you as a shore angler, if like if you were in a boat and you didn't have like electronics, like you couldn't use like uh, like a radar sonar system to find, yeah, you can, now you definitely know I'm not a boat guy, to find uh, fish uh, under the water, um, you can... Uh, you can the like then it's easier than being a shore angler but if the boat guy doesn't have that 
other than maybe covering water, you as a shore angler have the uh, advantage to being able to get into certain areas that the bass are that you can't with a boat. Like if you look at it, like a boat has to be a, like deep enough that they don't wreck their boat where a lot of the times the biggest fish are in four to five feet of water. I mean, I have a spot, I have all my spots actually, all my biggest, where I've caught all my biggest fish this season have all been in less than eight feet of water. Um, and that's really saying something. I mean, I'm talking about just, just little bit of the water column where I can have a plug that's diving all the way down to the bottom pretty easily. Um, as well as like, I've caught like some of the biggest fish in my season. I caught in maybe three to four feet of water. I mean, that's almost like the bass is almost a foot thick if you think about it. So the bass is only in a little bit of water and why is it in a little bit of water? Because when it's pushing the bait up and in there, that bait is not going to have an easy, it can't go above it because the bass is f filled up that whole water column. It's got to either it, it's got to go side to side, and the bass is kind of push it up to shore so it can't go any further, and then it's it has to come back at the bass. And by that time, really the only way it can go is side to side, and the bass is too fast to get, escape from at that time. So that's why if you wade way out and you're swimming out to these rocks that are like a half mile offshore, those bass could be behind you. So you gotta put that into perspective. The, the big bass at night are coming in close to shore. So when I'm fishing, I'm waiting for those. Well, what's gonna happen is, depending on the tide, and depending on, like if it's a, a high tide, the water's obviously gonna be deeper in areas, but it's gonna give it a pretty sharp like end point. Unless you're on the Cape or like on a sandy beach where it has a long time before it like gets shallow, like, Generally at high tide, it's like there's an end point to high tide. There's a bank, there's a like rocky cliff where the high tide will stop at. And it's hopefully not that deep because you don't really want to be super deep. But the other thing is if you're fishing in an area and it's all about eight feet and it's pretty like, it's like, cause it's my favorite fishing is wading boulder fields. I mean, that's what I did all this season. And I had so much luck on is just wading eight foot deep boulder field, swimming to a boulder, casting a needle off of that, casting a plug off of that, finding current, finding ways, finding white water. That's all I did the entire season. I did it most of the time at night. Now I talked a lot about just that first, like from like whatever sunset to it being super dark, but what about from super dark to sunrise? Now in my experience, it really starts, I mean, sunrise will be at like 4.30 during the like summer, like say it's at 4.30. I don't know what time of the summer this would be, but just say it's at 4.30 sunrise. It's going to start getting bright out a good four hours before that. I mean, it's truly extraordinary. So if you think about it, if it gets dark out at 7.40, like 7.30, that gives you like, and then it doesn't truly get dark until like 12 o'clock. It's like as dark as it's going to get you only have a couple of hours of it being super dark before it starts getting brighter again. And when it when it first gets dark out, when sunset first sets, like the sun first sets, first sets, um, that's gonna be a, a bite. You know, when the when it truly gets, first gets truly dark out, that's gonna be a bite. When it starts getting bright again, that's gonna be a bite. And when the sun just peaks up and it's the sun's rising, that's also gonna be a bite. So. And by a bite, I mean that's going to increase your chances of catching fish at those different time periods. That's when the bass are going to be feeding at their, like, like they're they're going to be most aggressively feeding at those times, um, at during the night. Uh, so that's when you kind of want to target like, okay, I like a rising tide. Um, you know, at, at you know I like a rising tide with a north wind in this spot. So I need to be there. Um, either at 12 o'clock when it first gets dark out or I need to be there at like whatever, six or like four o'clock or, or six o'clock when, or I guess we said 4.30, 4.30 when the sun rises. Um, so that's what I'm saying. Like you want to kind of like make your fishing, uh, like you want to start, you want to, how do I even put this? I'm just blanking on the words right now. You want to, uh, start your fishing like uh, time. You want to book your fishing time. There you go. You want to book your fishing time and plan it out for those 
different um, time, like those different like uh, segments and changes in the the like the like why am I <laughs> I can't think right now during the uh, the time of the day. So if I'm fishing and I want the 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 sun to the moon and the sun and everything to either be darker at one point or lighter at one point and where it's switching is where the bass are going to be feeding. Uh, so that's what I look for when the bass are feeding heavily and you know, so that's what you want to look for is if the bass are feeding heavily. You want to look for those times cause that's when it's going to be. Um, let's just move on. Uh, yeah. So I have questions. I've one question I got, I did this podcast shortly after I asked this on my Instagram. So, um, I'm sorry if I didn't get, if I didn't answer your question, um, on the podcast, I will wait, like, um, I'll feature it in the next podcast. If you ask a question after this, um, how well do you have to be able to know the area you are fishing in to attempt it at night? Okay. So, um, the cool thing about, I mean, I went over that already, but if I'm fishing an area, I, again, as I said, I want to be able to, you know, count where, how many steps I'm taking from spot to spot. But I guess how well do you have to know the area? I'd say you have to pretty much know the area well enough that if you walk, if you could only see like five feet in front of you, like to be able to know exactly where you are. So if I'm fishing on a, on a sandy beach and there's no structure and no like landmarks and I'm walking and I can't see anything for five feet. I need to know that like if I walk another hundred yards down the beach that there is a like a point or a something that I can say, okay, I know I'm here. So, or else you're going to be totally screwed. Or so uh, what I like to say is like if there's a big boulder or uh, driftwood or rocks or something that you can kind of like gauge where you are in different spots and you know that that's when I would say you're able to fish there at night or at least be like at least know the area a little bit I mean I've gone to a place like during the winter never fished it before like during the summer gone to the place at during the winter time done all my planning where I'm looking at water temp like water um like depths and whatever and then I'll be like okay this is going to be a spot that's going to be really good at night so I just I keep it in my fishing log as a, uh, like a potential spot for a certain wind and a certain tide. And so what I'll do is I'll look back at that um, and I'll have a little notes at the bottom. I'll have a little note about like, okay, remember this rock is 15 yards from this rock, which is 10 feet from here, which is going to be about three feet in this direction from the water. And then if you walk to the right a few steps, you can cast out and there'll be a rip or there'll be a whatever. So that's what I do when I'm fishing different areas. It just gives you a little bit of a, like, that's what you should do. That's in my opinion, the best way to do it. All right. So um, as far as like fishing at night goes, let's just recap it a little bit. I mean, the bass are in closer. Uh, it's pretty difficult to do, but um, the... I guess like the bass are in closer, they tend to be, the bigger bass tend to feed during that time because that's when they feel safest and they can eat, find their bait the easiest. Um, and then as far as uh, like, I guess I want to, when I first started out fishing, I actually listened to either like podcasts or music or something when I was fishing because um, it kind of just kept my mind off of like, like other like noises and stuff that would like freak me out. So if you're one of those people that like kind of get sketched out by fishing at night, like I say, throw some like headphones on or headphones, throw some like earbuds in and uh, just listen to music or something because that's, that helped me. Cause then I was like, I'm losing one of my senses. That's going to make me freaked out. So um, it also distracts you a bit. Uh, and I still do to this day. We'll listen to podcasts and stuff while I fish. Um, and I mean, it doesn't have to be fishing related podcasts, but I've listened to fishing related podcasts as I fished before. I've listened to audiobooks, um, but that's what I do when I fish just because um, it just, it, it like makes you less freaked out. The other good thing is if you're fishing by yourself and you need to like get in contact with someone quickly, it's easier to then like dig around your pockets for your phone. You can just like use your earbuds to 
call someone. So again, it's another little safety tip. I guess we should go over safety things while fishing at night. Um, I don't go anywhere without corkers, which are a studded shoe. Um, I And I definitely don't fish at night without my um, Stormer jacket, which is a uh, Stormer surf top, which is like a neoprene material and it is like waterproof. I guess it's not really waterproof, but it's a little bit buoyant and it's, it's waterproof. It keeps you warm. It also, if you fall, it does, you don't get really ripped up. Um, I mean, I'd even wear a life jacket. I don't because I feel competent enough in all the places that I fish that, and I'm also not really climbing off of, over cliffs and stuff. I just feel confident enough with my corkers and my my just ability in general that I'm not going to fall because I'm, I'm not like, I can walk and run on rocks perfectly fine i don't need to be like super like i'm very steady on my feet so i'm not like gonna fall down and kill myself uh although i have multiple times fallen down and generally when i fall down i don't fall super hard although i've fallen <laughs> very hard multiple times on rocks not during the night but actually during the day a few times um and i'm sure lots of people have had similar experiences to me as far as fishing on slippery rocks um, it cannot be fun, especially when there's a lot of barnacles around. It's like insult to injury. You fall really hard on a rock that's covered in barnacles. You just get torn up as well as you're bruised like crazy. Or you're, if in some extreme cases can be broken as well. Uh, so again, I, I feel like if you're going to fish at night, you, I wear the storm surf top. I wear waders. You can wear, um, you can also wear a, a wetsuit. Uh, the one thing is when you fish at night and it's like, oh my gosh, the bugs are insane sometimes. I mean, it's enough to drive you insane. Like you can't breathe without the bugs getting in your mouth. I'll wear a uh, mesh um, bug net around my head. Uh, it's so bad. I've taken, I have cell phone footage of, um, of there being so many mosquitoes around me that like it's in, it's just insane sometimes because what happens is I fish off of these big rocky cliffs that have all these little indents and stuff in them that water gathers and that's where the mosquitoes breed and stuff so the mosquitoes are really heavily populating that area and so when you're like fishing around in that area I mean oh my god the mosquitoes are everywhere as well as this year there's an outbreak of like triple e and stuff so that was also fun when you're like getting eaten alive by mosquitoes and like all the towns around you are being like, <laughs> like there's been reports of people dying from triple E or getting infected by it. And there you're like getting bitten by mosquitoes like crazy. I was like, if I haven't died, it's probably not going to happen because it's probably not here because I got so eaten up this year. I mean, I have so many videos and that's the one thing like, if you like always bring bug spray with you because it can save your life. And even then there was nights where I had so much bug spray on me. I mean, it was insane, but the, the mosquitoes would still bite me. I mean, there's, I mean, it's, it's, tr oh, I can't even, it's so bad. And you can't breathe without the mosquitoes going up your nose and your mouth. I mean, and you hear them buzzing around your ears. I'm sure a lot of people are loving this, but yeah, it's, it's, can be super super bad the bugs can be really really bad so definitely wear bug spray um because it can be really really rough without bug spray um yeah so um i think that's all i have as far as like for fishing at night um i i i feel like i covered a lot of bases as far as why i fish at night and it's because it gives you it's like way better odds of catching much larger fish um and even more fish for that matter uh, and it's definitely, if you want to take your fishing game to the next level, that's when I would start fishing at night. If you feel a hundred percent confident fishing during the day and you're sick and tired of catching small fish, then try fishing at night because that's your best bet at catching a big fish. And I'd say try fishing at night with eels. If you're going to start fishing at night, fish at night with eels, because if you're going to catch a big fish, it's going to be on an eel. I mean, that's the best way to do it. Um, so I've gone over eel fishing. I've a uh, podcast about fishing live and rigged eels. I'm going to do videos in the future about how I fish eels because I do it so much and have been so successful on them. Um, and uh, I do a lot of 
I'm even more successful half the time with these Puma plugs as well during the night time. As I was saying, I, can't, I threw it literally through an eel that night where it was a lot of big, heavy surf, and the eel was just getting too washed around. So I threw on a Puma plug, and I had incredible night. The shad stick, just getting it down deeper underneath the disturbed water. I was catching bass between 25 and 30 pounds. It was a night for the record books for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and listening to this podcast. Um, and I will see you next time.